fresh groove, right? I like it. It's really, really good for royalty-free music. Did you lay this down or you get it from a music No, I got it from a music library. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, welcome to All Over VoiceOver with Kiff VH. This is Kiff VH, and thank you so much for joining us. I am thrilled to uh, to welcome to the uh, to the blue velvet room at Global Voice Broadcasting uh, the lovely, the talented Mr. John Curry. John, thanks so much for coming in. Oh man. yeah, yeah, my pleasure, man. This is beautiful. This is quite an impressive spread here. I Isn't it nice? You. I like it. Man. I, the walls are so they're velvety yeah. and warm. I took a picture and put it on Twitter, and people can see what it looks like. But yeah, you know, it's not yeah, yeah. it's much nicer than what I was expecting. I'm glad. I have to tell I, well, you. I know because because I don't necessarily <laughs> engender high quality. You were expecting like a cardboard box, and I wasn't. I thought maybe like a converted passenger van with some shag carpeting from <laughs> how we'd be in there. That's season you know. two. Yeah, <laughs> that's my on plan. the road. That's right. Right. I'll come to you. We'll park in the driveway. We can go anywhere. You know, absolutely. You know, we could just do this in Dayton. That's the amazing thing. Is like you yeah. and and it's like it's like voiceover work. You can kind of do it anywhere. Yep. Where'd you where'd you start? Did you start doing this here, no. or were you, were you you did it elsewhere before? No, no, I was. Uh, I went to grad school in uh, Philly at Temple University, got mm-hmm. my master's there, and I was. I had every intention to come out to Los Angeles. Yeah, and my buddy at the time, who had finished uh, his graduate work at Washington, was living up in New York, and he's like, "Dude, we, uh, this dude just moved out. You should come to New York." I mean, at some point in your career, like everybody, every young actor has to live here at some point. Like you really should consider it. I'm like, ah, I'm going to LA. Yeah. So I went up there. I checked it out. I'm like, okay, I'll do it. So I ended up going straight from uh, Philly to New York. Really? And uh, got my uh, one bedroom in a three bedroom uh, walk up uh, 105th in Amsterdam, uh-huh. which was still a crack neighborhood yeah. uh, at the time. And uh, started living <laughs> wow. there and started auditioning, you know, for regional theater and uh, got a bartending job and a waiting job. And yeah. uh, and uh, I got signed by Buckwald for on-camera commercials. Okay. I was my first commercial agent. Yeah. And I hadn't done really any VO to speak of. <clears throat> and uh, one day I just kind of marched over to the VO section of the agency. <laughs> yeah. They repped uh, Howard Stern and a yeah. bunch of uh, big talent at the time. I'm like, well, I heard they have a pretty outstanding VO department. So I just kind of marched over there and I, I met, uh, you know, Steve Kay and some of the other uh, heads of the department. And I said, hey, I'm John Curry. I'm Michael Raymond over on uh, camera signed me and uh, I want to do VO. Yeah. So they set, start sending me out. I don't know why. That's amazing. They started sending me out and I booked the first thing I, I went out for, which was a Tyco RC, Harley Davidson RC motorcycle yeah. running on Saturday mornings like crazy. You know? Oh, those Saturday morning the spots. Best. They are the best. The best. Uh, so I booked that and they were like, whoa, what? <laughs> so, was, you know, my first job was a, was a Saturday morning national network spot. And yeah. so, uh, and they said like, okay, we'll, uh, we'll rep you for VO as well. So, um, you know, for for aspiring VO artists out there, yeah. Uh, sometimes if you think you can, you just can. Sometimes if you, you know, think you can, you can. And ignorance is bliss, truly. Yeah. You know. But again, I you know I, I had 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 an acting background. I came from my undergrad is in theater and my uh, my master's degree, and and you know, not that that's by any means necessary, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was it. So so we started in uh, that was about I don't know ninety four. Oh wow, New York City. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's great. Crazy. Then it's it's to me it's fascinating how how if you have any kind of an ear, you know, if you you listen to television, you listen to radio, you pick up cadence, you pick up the delivery, you yeah. pick up all those little nuances that you just kind of know. Like even like my background was improv, right. so so much of it is like we're going to do a parody of such and such, and all of a sudden I'm doing a parody of a radio voice and blah blah blah. Right, and and then you book doing a parody. Right. Of well, a radio which, voice. Well, I was going to say, which is you know this this classic uh, announcer idea that we have isn't right. is uh, is is in and of itself a parody of itself. Yes, and so. It's all completely come round. It's like that yeah. is that is becoming very uh, de rigueur too. You know, back yeah. to the old kind of classic because they're thinking of it in advertising terms as that announcer esque parody. Yes, you know, and it, I just think it's fascinating. It all comes it comes back around. It all comes back around, <laughs> but it does. It's broad and and uh, you can be as well, especially as you know for. You know, animation and and games, uh, you have a real opportunity to spread your wings and just be outrageous at times. Oh, man. Which is really 
It's freeing. Really, it's really thrilling and, and therapeutic. Fun. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I wish I could do more of it. <laughs> I do too. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a lot of you, your your background. Uh, I mean, uh, just just going back a little bit to to the commercial side of things, because mm-hmm. I'm I'm more I've seen myself and associated myself certainly more on the commercial side mm-hmm. than than some of the other things. And that's what led me to Los Angeles was to chase more of the video game and and animation right. things. But you know, commercial is still very close and dear and and important you know right. to the lifeblood what's where would you uh, where would you find yourself where do you find yourself looking at your career and because you're also an on camera actor and all that stuff uh how does how does it break down for you generally and i know it's always changing and stuff but do you yeah. find yourself more commercial or more animation and video game or more video game or what you know you know i um i feel fortunate I feel very fortunate in that, uh, you know, being at CESD and having Pat and Kathy, yeah. uh, getting to know them better. I, I definitely came on, uh, Buckwald, when I moved from New York, Buckwald, um, sent me to TGI and I was with them and Vox for a while. And then I uh, was talking to my good friend, Sean Donnellan oh, yeah. all the time on the phone. And, and I kept hearing about the obscene amount of copy that he was getting every single day, which I hadn't seen. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh, I've got to make a change. Yeah. So I called them up and I said, uh, Sean put me in touch with, with, uh, Peter Verano at the time. And, and mm-hmm. so we went and had lunch and then ended up signing there. But I ended up signing at that time. I had had a, a pretty big car campaign for a couple of years. Nice. So, uh, it was sort of a no brainer to go to a little bit, uh, higher press, you know, higher, higher level, um, VO house. Yeah. And I also said, well, the deal is you got to take me on camera commercials as well. Cause nice. I'd already always done those. So. And life makes life so much easier oh, when you're dealing Lord, with conflicts. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's to, to juggle yeah. conflicts no. between two agencies totally. is madness. Don't get me wrong. Many times I wish they didn't know I had any <laughs> conflicts <whatsoever laughs> sure. because there's things that we could get away with that right. you know, they have a lot of integrity and, and, and yeah. it will keep us out of legal hot water. Right. But, you know, there certainly are times like, oh, darn it. I got that I regional really restaurant have conflict. <laughs> yes, it's right. killing me. <laughs> Taking that's me right. out of McDonald's, you know, that's or right. whatever. That's right. Uh, so yeah, that's another thing that a lot of people like, you know, don't, don't realize is that, uh, when we're getting paid a guaranteed holding fee, thank you, SAG after. Amen. Um, uh, that is for your persona. That is for your brand. That is for whether it be voice or on camera. And a lot of people don't realize that. That's that right. You're being held in conflict and being paid a, a holding fee. Even if they don't recognize it might or be small. hear your voice. It might be a promo for the double cheeseburger in the Orlando mm-hmm. Mcdonald's market. One wild spot use yeah. that comes up every 13 weeks and they hold on to it and keep right. running it. And That's that right. keeps you out of going after a fast food. Yeah. But, uh, but sometimes, you know, those things, those, sometimes those little, little regional, uh, and wild spot things just turn into gold and oh. they'll go for five, six, seven, eight years. That's and right. you're just getting in a little annuity and, uh, and your rep renegotiates and there All you go. Yeah, so I, right. I try to look at it, you know, and the, I try to take the greater picture. Yeah. Uh, general outlook because those have often surprised me and have often led to, to other opportunities. And um, sometimes when you're not expecting it, that along comes this check for four or 500 bucks. Yeah. That is exactly what you need when it hits. Totally. And you're like, you know what? I right. can't. It's like when you have a kid, you know, they say a loaf of bread under, under each, each arm. Like, that's I'm, right. I'm not sure that's entirely true, but. Yeah, I've always been surprised when I'm sitting there staring at my wife going, what have we done? Oh, my God, woman. What have we done? We brought another life into the world. Oh, oh man. So, the pressure yeah. that all that stuff of, of you know, I, I remember being being really hesitant to to fantasize or think about bringing kids into the world mm-hmm. because of what I wanted to do. Yeah. Because I knew that there isn't security. There's no guarantees. No. Yeah. But – you know, the, 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 the more the economy changes and the more the world changes, the, the, you know, watching my dad like get lo- let go from the company, from oh. the hospital he worked at for 40 years, yeah. two or three years before retirement. Yeah. It was like the idea of a cradle to grave job. There, right. In some respects, I feel more secure yeah. because I know that, well, tomorrow I'm going to go g- look for work. Truly. And, you know, campaigns end, yes. shows end. Absolutely. That's what they do. So That's right. it prepares you for the, it keeps you hungry and it keeps you curious. Yeah. I think that's a really interesting point because I talked to, you know, my civilian friends yes. uh, who are, uh, you know, work, either work for corporate jobs or, um, have had, you know, a consistent, 
employment in, in, in some capacity or in some yeah. field for a long time. And, and they always say, God, I, just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't handle rejection. I couldn't handle doing what you do. And I'm like, well, first of all, you don't really know until you've experienced that for a while. So yeah. when you change, when you change your philosophy and your outlook as to what your procurement of jobs really entails, which is our job is getting jobs. Yes. 99.2. That is the time. That's the job. The job is like the cupcake. The job is the gravy. That's the awesome part, the fun part, the easy part. Yeah. It's the grind of, of getting the jobs in voiceover or film or television or any, anything in our capacity, in our, right. in our industry. Um, it's just, it's really a, it's an adjustment of your entire psyche. You have to go into it going, you have to have that, like you're saying, you have to have that, uh, positive visualization and, the knowledge that it, the next job w will come. Yes. Even when you've just been released from a Mac daddy, sweet, ridiculous, you know, campaign. That's right. And you think that life is over and you're never going to work again. Right. And all you can do is remind yourself that, you know what, you know, what's really, really great. I don't have that conflict anymore. Right. When That's you get that letter and first you like drop one single solitary tear on that yep. release letter and then you go, well, there's that conflict's gone. So, Or the call for an audition for something that you've been doing for two years. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's, that's oh, yeah. you know yeah. there, there's a lot of challenges where yeah. it's just it's you suck it up and you go in the room and you go well I'm going to give you what I've been doing yeah or I could give you something else but I hope that it's just it's just you know yeah. it's what it is yeah it is people changing gears is just yeah. going to happen I haven't had my I have not had myself uh, referenced uh, on a on a spec yet but yeah I have a lot of VO buddies that have they're like I'm pretty sure I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, right. I will do this job, by the yeah. way. I, there's I a reason we, it. there's a reason we said a George Clooney type is because we don't want George Clooney. Right, right. Like, oh, 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 the type. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I guess uh, Kiff Van Der type is not what they're looking for. Uh, yeah. Fine. But, you know, I mean, I, I, the, it was the thing too, you, you mentioned earlier about like getting, having something, getting, getting a copy hose turned on to that sense of suddenly getting the opportunity. Yeah. Because I do feel like all, all I really want and all I think any actor really wants too is that sense of I'm just in the hunt. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't expect to book everything I go out for. No. Although you go in with that sort of attitude of like, I'm going to, I'm going to close. I'm going to give my best shot and, and this is mine. Yeah. And, uh, and, and it's a, it's a, but to all I've ever wanted is, the knowledge of I got a shot. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah, no, it's the only thing you can ask for. Right, it's, it's the only thing you can ask for. You have to position yourself. Certainly in L.A. and uh, I haven't been in New York a lot of years, but in Los Angeles, especially now in voiceover, when everyone has a home rig, yeah, all over the country, all over the world, all you can hope for is access to jobs that exist. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, first yeah. of all. Yeah. And jobs that are uh, union, you know, yeah. and jobs that are, 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 can provide you a living wage or at least provide a piece of a living wage. Yes. You see what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, because there has been a tremendous shift and there's, there's been an explosion of celebrity voiceover work. Um, they've always used celebrities, but always for voiceover. But, but now, you know, the jig is up. The jig is definitely up. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be too rich or too famous for VO. No. Right. Uh, and the, the trick is to, you know, is to weather the storm oh, in yeah. a way, you yeah. know, I mean, we've yeah. been in it long enough. Both of us have been in it yeah. long enough to see, to see patterns go away and reemerge and go away and reemerge. Yeah. And eventually the companies are going to be like, you know, we really want that sort of regular guy sound that you're just not going to get from, you know, from a, from a big celebrity. Sure. And, you know, the hope is that you still have the regular guy sound or that you keep nurturing those things. Exactly. And continue to diversify and build your, build your range. And be able to, uh, identify, you know, identify your own pattern. Hmm. Like it, you know, I found yeah. that I, when I was doing a car campaign that I it was a very intense, high energy retail car read you know, 95% of what I was doing for that account. Was it was, deals was very, and offers? It like was. And it was constantly stuff? changing. It was all, yeah. all dealer, dealer spots all over the nation and wow, uh, for a, the entire brand. Rate. Yeah. And so it was very uh, high. And every once in a while, you'd have an opportunity to do a, a, a national TV spot, which was sort of out of the mold. Yeah. Um, 
and you could take your time. But for the most part, it was like, Wah! yeah. And two ninety nine dollars, twenty four month, right? exactly. Yeah. And and you and you had to get it in 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 the thirty or or whatever, or the fifteen or the sixty. But yeah. I found that when I, when I came over, when I first came over to CSD, uh, there was still a lot of angst for in my reads in in huh. some pro not not in all products, not in all cases, but I was there was a degree of like intensity, and I wasn't letting the mic work for me, and I I had to reevaluate a little bit because I was doing so much of one thing. It's like when some of the promo dudes get on a uh, yes, they they get in their promo groove, and they've been doing it for many years. Uh, sometimes their retail, sometimes their commercial read starts sounding a little promo or yeah, uh, I mean I. It happens sometimes, not to everyone, but I I had a, I had to kind of sl- stop and and reassess my some of my commercial reads. What, I felt was, it was, what was your process? Did you go to someone or did you just start? No, playing well, with your I voice did have a, you... I had a, an agent. I had an agent sort of mention it, and hmm. uh, and sometimes uh, sometimes the if you have a good booth director, this is this is before we were doing most of our stuff at home, hmm. right? Yeah, and self directing, yeah. which, which goes to this. I mean, this obviously is all part of that. Yeah, um, being able to recognize that and self direct. But <clears throat> yeah, I had a, some booth directors and uh, and one agent in particular mention it to me, and you know, and say, yeah, you know, you're coming off this this account, and it's uh, it's a lot of the same stuff. So hmm. you know, take a look at this, and let's. So I started looking at. <clears throat> Other actors, other voice actors in particular that I knew that, uh, did a wide variety of products, but very different products. Huh. And I listened to some demo reels and I would look and I would listen for them on the air yeah. and I would listen to their sort of very specific POV on a, on a product yeah. and how their reads would change. And I started just trying to, um, uh, just try to be, be become more conscious of, you know, when I was falling into a, you know, a pocket read or, yeah. and that can be a good thing. Pocket, your, your pocket read can be you. It can be the good pocket read or it can be the caricature of you. Pocket when you, when read. you say pocket read, you mean like hands in your pocket and it's casual guy? No, or I mean, do you mean the one like, you go to, like ah, it's gotcha. in your pocket. This yeah. is my little bag of tricks. Just like acting when you're on, yeah. if you're, you're in a play or you're, you're watching yourself on camera do a, a guest star on a TV show and you make that one little facial gesture, <laughs> that one weird little thing, which actually yeah. is kind of like a tick in a way. Yeah. But I'm like, oh yeah, I always do that thing. I'm like, yeah. And I don't even like, I don't like to watch myself at all, hmm. but I'll recognize certain little things that are, that are really tricks. So when you don't have a lot of time to prepare and you're making, trying to make strong choices or you get on set or whatever and you've, you've li- literally booked a job, done the fitting the next day and you're on set the next day. Yeah. And maybe you haven't had as much time as you would like to become familiar with your role or, or you're just some- kind of doing a version of a role you've already done. Right. You know, a bad cop or right. corrupt cop. <laughs> How do you make fresh choices right. motivated by this right. script for this instance and not going back to, well, I've done 50,000 of these and this is right. another one of these spots for Applebee's right. where they like it's sort of a high energy version right. of 30 something, 40 something guy. Exactly. And there's a different, I think there's a really fine line, uh, of uh, between judging, like it's almost becomes a judgment on that. Like yeah. it's, it's, there's an affectation that sort of becomes like, uh, you know, I can make my own personal feelings. I can make a little bit of judgment, a little bit of a statement about that. And it's about that particular read. And yeah. I, you have to try to avoid that. You have to try to, because the people, all the people that have been busting their butts to create this spot, you know, it's their baby yeah. and they're putting in, long, hard hours and they want it to be earnest. And yeah. even if it's, even if it's a, even if it's a snarky spot, right. You have to come, come they, at it with a, want it to be good. People are exact, spending a ton of money ton on of this money. thing to make it work and, and to make and test markets and test yeah. groups. And, and, you know, we have no idea how much goes into sometimes a demo, you know? Right. So that's absolutely true. So yeah, I, uh, it, it, I think it's, it's really critical for, uh, you know, young voice actors that they're starting out just to, or try to retain their optimism and a sense of objectivity yeah. when they're going into projects. And I think that's that's a great point, and I think that that's also something that that some of us older voice actors need to embrace and find too. Because oh, it's that, hard because it gets you get even harder. Freaking jaded. Yeah, I yeah. mean that's just a fact. You, you're in it for twenty plus years. You know, you yeah. got to. 
and there and there are new generations of coming up behind you. Yep. And the uh, I'll never forget uh, sitting in a lobby uh, in New York one time. There's about thirty of us, and we're all exactly alike. You know, mm-hmm. any thirty of us in that room could have done the that job just fine. Yep. Obviously, I thought I could do it better, but sure. But any, any of these thirty guys who I all you know knew, we all knew and respected each other. And then they were, sh- they, there were some older dudes, maybe 10, 15 years older than us that they were still also considering they were on the fence between those two types, those two vocal qualities. And, yeah. and, uh, I heard this one actor, just this older guy, just bitching about these young Gen Xers who's coming in. Like, what do they even do? I mean, what is that? What is it? What are these reads they're doing? I mean, they don't even make sense. You know, and he had this like really whiskey, smoky whiskey voice, you know, and he classic announcer dude. He's like, I don't even know what they're doing. It's just like they're, they're just reading the copy. It's just, make sense and uh yeah that's the generation you know yeah. because there was eight guys that did everything for right 30 years including animation that's right <laughs> when they refer uh, when some of the older generation guys refer to the good old days yeah. when there were 25 guys doing it and they and that got was it. ridiculously wealthy absolutely i mean and then, and, they and, owned and, the market and voice brand voice bank for our generation yeah. cracked things oh, open dude, even more so huge way you know Great resource for clients. Amazing. Uh, you know, you can. And, you know, but I mean, that, that was, that was how I made a living in Chicago of being able to be considered for things that would otherwise not necessarily come to that market. Yeah, totally. You know, I mean, we've done auditions for, you know, like, I don't want to name specific things, but like even regional spots in small regions in the country that why would they even come to LA for it? Right. We've both worked in different regions. Sure. So like that idea of, you know, why are they going to LA to get a, to get a spot for a Detroit hospital? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you, <clears throat> you wouldn't think they would, especially mm-hmm. if it's like a, for a, a, like a mid, you know, sort of a mid major market, you know, yeah. like a Chicago market list. We know how many talented people are oh in Chicago. God. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I've worked, worked for, you know, Chicago local yeah. hospitals, you know, That's right. grocery store chains, you name it. Uh, yeah. but you even more probably so with your, with your, uh, authentic Midwestern sensibility. That's, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and, and dialect and finding ways to tap into it and, exactly. t- and turn that regionalization off. Oh, you yeah. know, oh, yeah. it's a subtle thing, but it creeps into everything. Oh, I for mean, sure. especially been, when you're drunk. Oh, especially when you're drunk, which I try to be drunk when I'm doing all of that. Yeah. <laughs> if, I, if I can still read the copy. <laughs> Gold can come out. Was, I don't know. That's right. <laughs> it was actually the best direction I've ever gotten. It was, I was doing a, a casting director workshop and I did the read and I wanted it to be right. I wanted it to be so right. I wanted to impress this casting director in this workshop. And she said, sweetheart, take a drag of a cigarette and a sip of whiskey and do it again. Yeah. And that it helped me immensely to, to sort of. Tapping into what you were talking earlier about that energy from the previous thing. Yeah. And, and I, I, my energy runs higher too. And I feel like I bring that into the booth and I forget, you know, that, well, maybe this character isn't getting ready to leap on someone. Oh, sure. You know what I mean? Maybe this character does just need to slow down and take a sip. That's, that is great advice. I can't tell. I find a nickel for every time the booth director told me to slow down. Man. I just fly through that stuff because I've had a venti americano <laughs> almost every single time before I've gone into CESD. And you've been sitting for an hour and a half. Exactly. So you're you're oh, ready. Like, you're ready to. I have rehearsed. The, oh, you know prepared. what? Prepared. <laughs> I'm ready to come in here and get it. And I've <laughs> got to get to Warner Brothers by two. And by the way, I'll be out in ten minutes, and I don't know what the hell everyone else is doing in there. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> uh, I'm like, really? Are we reading the yellow pages today? Seriously? Man, who knows? Oh. Who knows? I, I love that. I do love the feeling, the kind of mic drop feeling of going in and leaving the booth. Like, got it in one. Boom. See you guys I, later. I mean, if it's a disaster, <laughs> let's go again. Right. You know, it, I go, hey, Scott, did we totally, did I totally miss the point and or intention of this? Let's go again. Right. Otherwise, did we, didn't we just kind of get it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I want to. I want to change. I want to change gears. I'm very. I'm very curious about this. And we were talking about this the other day. Yeah. Um. About about kids because your your kid is in the business now. Mm. And yeah. And what? I actually talked about it at length with with GK Bose when she was in here too because her son does it. Uh huh. And my daughter is now kicking on the door of it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I'm I'm wondering what your 
I don't know that, uh, yeah, advice slash observations are right. in terms of how'd you prep your child to go into this business? You've yeah. got a working awareness. You've been yeah. in the business for a while. Mm-hmm. So what's, what's your, what's your feeling about all you this? You know, stuff? it's interesting. I think you could ask, it's, it's half and half when, when you ask an actor about this. Yeah. A lot of them will say, absolutely no way in heck. I'm going to do You can this. say hell. Hell yeah. is fine. How's it so, <laughs> It's for Kip's daughter. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to watch my normal sailor potty mouth out of respect for Kip's child. There's still only $1 uh, in the swear jar. <laughs> you know, I owe my eight year old $10 apparently, <laughs> which she'll lose. Um, but I, it, it, I, I was working on, uh, and, and the lead was saying, she's like, I, I don't, I think these people, I think she didn't know them. I had a kid that does voiceover. She's like, I think these people, these actors that put their kids in the business are insane. Absolutely mm-hmm. insane. Now, mind you, that's coming from someone that probably makes about, you know, 300,000 episodes. I don't know what their, <laughs> I don't know what their day rate is, but right. it was not my day rate. <laughs> anyway, um, or what their regular fee is. Right. But, uh, I'm like, and we're not doing it for the, for the money either. Yeah. Um, and some, and some families are, and that's, yeah. and that's totally fine. I'm not, I don't judge that. Whatever. And, and mind you, when you get a child, when you get a, an actor, a young actor who, um, or more than one in, in often, in many cases, yeah. uh, it is a full time job, uh, for that parent. Oh so God. one parent, uh, if the, fo- if let's say the dad or the mom has a full time job away from home, the other parent is, can't work. Right. It, it's, it's just impossible. You'd have to hire someone full time because that getting the kids to their auditions, bookings, um, sessions, uh, fittings, uh, all over town. By the way, nothing yes. centrally located. You nothing. know, you know, everything's all over the place. Right, uh, is a full time job. Full time. I met a mom recently. Uh, Madeline was doing some uh, looping for a big um, uh, Warner Brothers picture that's coming up, and every other kid in there had done like multiple looping slash ADR sessions and and worked. Every single one worked extensively. Madeline was by far the least experienced wow. uh, person there. And I I was just amazed talking to this one mom that she has three kids in the business. She has them all under one corp. And she is the administrator. I mean, she is the financial and career logistics administrator of these three kids' careers. It's just extraordinary. And she was so fascinating to talk to because I realized that I just, we just kind of like the tip of the iceberg, yeah. but do I feel conflicted? Absolutely. I feel, huh. um, it's very difficult. Uh, you, you, there's no way to really prep a kid to say, uh, you probably were the best. You probably were the normally would have been the first choice or, or were the most capable and most uh, talented in this particular instance for that job, but there are so many other factors that quote unquote aren't personal. Yeah, that decide that. Yeah, and um, to a kid, uh, I mean, coming from when I was little, yeah, uh, they they seem incredibly personal. And so, yes. no matter how mature or or uh, seasoned you are, you know, as as a young person, it always seems it seems personal to me. And I'm in my yeah. mid forties. Yeah, it still seems personal. <laughs> exactly. You know, I'm like. <laughs> I mean, it's incredibly personal. <laughs> you don't I mean, like just, my body. You yeah, don't like my body. Anything about me, my voice. <laughs> my, right. Uh, so, yeah. Um, but she – it would be very weird for me to to dissuade her, obviously, yeah. from just from a, a pure hypocritical standpoint. It would be weird for me to say you can't do it. Did your um, folks encourage your interest in doing um, this stuff? My mom drove me to rehearsal. You know, she, mm. she said, hey, they're – you know, this – Spokane Civic Theater is going to do Oliver. Do you want? You think you might want to check that out? And 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 brought me the cast uh, album, and yeah. I I just listened to it and, and and got the role. But you know there were there were uh, there were many many times when I I thought about that because it's mm-hmm. you know the driving and the hours and and this was just for for stage. You know yeah. I wasn't in L A. I wasn't going to. In right. Television and film and oh radio and, and all the incredible, all the many, many, many opportunities that a, a child actor has here if they do everything. You know, if, if they do just, everything, if they're not just on, you know, on, on camera or right. celebrity actors. But, um, and that's another thing that kind of goes to the whole point. They, sh- my eldest has has gotten a perspective now as to what you have to do because hmm. they love doing voiceover, but I have a booth. 
if we had to drive somewhere, right? I think they would change their. I mean, aside from the gig itself, but if we had to, if we had to drive all over town yeah. for to go read copy, um, like you do for an on-camera commercial or a television or a film right. audition, um, you know, it might be a very because one of them goes to school in Orange County, so it's like you know, you don't, you know, you don't know. Uh, you don't know how you don't know how long it takes to get places in LA. <laughs> I mean, as the crow flies, it's forty miles, but it takes two hours sometimes yeah, to get to a job. That's right, and especially and another hour to get there, and especially for kids' school. hours because it's the after school and it's always yes. like that. If There's you're going window. to two hundred South, you got to go there at four between four and six for those kids totally. to be able to be there. Totally, and it's j- and it will and, be jammed, and that and it's jammed, right? And that's when all the traffic is bad. Absolutely, from three thirty on, it's madness. No so question. like, so to to have to make that requires such a tremendous sacrifice and some some parents love it like it was fascinating doing richie to like meet some of these folks who do that and all the kids did it like all of them all of them like i mean for both for i don't think i'm talking out of school but for for both josh's mom josh played murray on the yep, show yep. his little sister was also in the industry both yes. of them are with cesd she yeah. was in uh, the mad max video uh, by the way Maddie. they have the most impressive roster of child talent of anybody oh. in this town it's mind-blowing and they're and are, are your kids are right yeah. too yeah, yeah. Uh, and wonderful yeah. melissa is oh, just the best the best, best. <clears throat> you hear that melissa you're the best <laughs> um yeah no it's it's uh I don't know. What you, they're just they're so fortunate and so professional and so talented. Yeah, yeah I, I, yeah, I wrestle with it, but you know, they're also kids, and and mine all go to mm. regular school still. So, yeah. you know, maybe if things get busier, we'd ha- we'll have to reconsider. But the most of the kids are homeschooled. Yes. When they get to a certain level and they're working all the time, you're either being taught on set by a studio teacher or you're being taught by your parents at home. Yeah. And so you also have to, that's what you're signing up for as a parent. I am not equipped to do that. Yeah. Well, you know, I probably could be come equipped, but, but I don't want to do it. Right. You're <laughs> still, you're still, still doing, trying to get my own job. Right. You're doing your career. Yeah. So to, so to, to, to make that choice and sacrifice <laughs> exactly. is a constant battle Yeah. and you don't want to half-ass it either. No. You know what I mean? No. I think that's, and I can't do math. So I mean, anything above <laughs> a third grade level. So there's just no, there's no point. My wife has to do the math and you know, that's difficult enough as it is just getting through second grade homework. Right. <laughs> exactly. Common core. What the hell is common core? Common core, I actually, know. I got to say, and uh, I, I like common core. It makes <laughs> yeah. sense to me. Yeah. Good. Common core is basically math through money. Oh, okay. Like the idea of tens borrowing from tens uh-huh. and they use all these boxes and stuff, but mm-hmm. it's basically just money. Okay. It's twenties and tens and hundreds and, right. and you know, oh, I gotta, I gotta pay someone 56 bucks. How much change do I have in my pocket? Right. You know, that kind of stuff. Okay. I, I find it I'm to gonna, be a lot more I'm gonna sense. Have to, I'm gonna, I will try to put that prism over it now. But again, that's also second grade math. I haven't done anything with it since my daughter started doing 10 marks. Yeah. Are your kids on 10 marks? I'm out of, yeah, I think so. I'm out of, uh, well, one, we've got an eighth grade. So okay. thank goodness she is uh, good at math and gets yeah. an A in it. But uh, I, I'm, it's just beyond me now. Oh, I can't even imagine like uh, geometry and trig. I mean, oh. I liked geometry, but I won't be able to teach it. I, my my geometry is about as limited as being able to measure the space in my room that I could get a projector for in our living room. If we were going to get a projector that's pretty TV, good. that's that's pretty good. Yeah, Working with triangles, that. figuring that out. Absolutely, yeah, I'm impressed with myself. I'm impressed that you did getting that, yeah. ratios sixteen by nine and measuring that ratio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's not bad. It's not see bad. That, and that's a practical application right there. That's what I'm how talking about. How big of a per, of a projector screen? How or, big do I need? And how how powerful a? <laughs> and how many lumens can it be? Yeah. And what's a lumen? Exactly. Like the, the amount of the amount of research that I've done on projectors over the past couple of days is kind uh, of absurd. We're not trying to do it before Christmas. We're not even really trying to. Do it. But projectors are way more affordable than they used to be. My TV's fine. My TV's great. Yeah, still. Yeah, got a green Looking light from the it. wife. So it's absent. So Did you go absent? I, I haven't gone yet. No, you can't it. endorse anybody, but I I'm gonna be dropping I'm gonna absent. be dropping brand names <laughs> right left. Where'd you go with the? Uh... I a buddy of mine. I'm I just I'm narrating an audio book right now, yeah. and in his studio he has a 3D projector set up, and it's a Ben Q. A 3D? Huh? Oh, nice. Oh yeah, oh, and nice. they're more affordable than the TVs. Do you wear the? Yeah, yeah. The, the the BenQ is like active shutter technology. Wow. So so they it, it sinks to the box and then it flickers fast. That is awesome. 
It's unbelievable. What is it? Does it look incredible? It looks great. Yeah. You get that depth. Right. And I, I have a 3D TV. I have an LG 3D uh-huh. TV uh-huh. with, uh, with, uh, the passive technology. So, okay. so the glasses are the same that you would get when you go to the movie theater. Right. So the real D glasses work on the TV at home. So oh, cool. throw a 3D Blu-ray in and That's sit back cool. and take it. And the Wizard of Oz, they did a post convert on it. Oh, wow. Unreal. That's amazing. Did you watch mm-hmm. The Wiz the other night? Yeah. That was good. It was really good. Wasn't it? I was like, wow. It was great. <laughs> the, the soundtrack is out too. I'm going to pick that up. I can't wait for Grease. I think Grease oh, is my next, God. right? I think so. Oh, man. It's going to be a blast. And we yeah. saw The Hateful Eight uh, the other night. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude. A small little movie that's incredibly heavy and great. Can't it's, wait. It's freaking awesome. You'll love it. I mean, the I vast it. majority of what I see is it has to be like kid oriented, or I, I yeah. rarely get out to see an adult, like not you know adult pornographic, but adult, uh, <laughs> right? Adult right. themed, exactly. <laughs> Grown up movies. We drug her. We took her to Star Wars, but we took her to Spectre too. We're right in that transition. Of, oh yeah. Of like, I, I I had a conversation with my wife the other day about it. It was like, you know, my parents took me to go see Vacation. Mm-hmm. They took us to see Tootsie. They took us to see- Tootsie was great. Amazing. In the theater. Right. But like, but I was about her age, maybe yeah. a little bit older. Oh, yeah. So like, when do you make the transition of like- it, Yeah. It, it happened to, someone had written a review of The Good Dinosaur that said it was practically like, it was a horror film. Like for for like, have you seen it? No, because I haven't seen it yet either. Like like there, like if I knew what I know about Big Hero Six in terms of the emotional yeah devastation of that right. movie, Ilsa is like I liked it. I never want to see that movie again. Right. So with that context, do I take her to see the Good Dinosaur, knowing that that's coming? Right. You know what I mean? So I was like, we could go see the Good Dinosaur, right. or I could take you to see The Martian. Yeah. She opted for The Martian. Right. Loved it. Sure. No, the the Martian, you know, aside from a few F bombs, I mean, there you go. Uh, really, it's it's a great adventure story. It really but is. See, that's another thing I've learned with the thir- you know having three kids now is that I've I've been wrong on my assessments of how they'll process and or understand huh. uh, a film or any or a theater or a piece of art or something. So now I'm I I I just kind of say well. I think we saw it. it. It's like, um, because if you're going to theater, like if you're going to Steppenwolf and right. you're seeing a new play and it's going to have language, it's going to have sexual content, it still might be on the mature side. Uh, maybe, maybe too much for the eight year old, but it, it's on the mature side, but it's still art. It's still live yes. art. So I remember going to things that had content in it and going, but being blown away by the venue, being blown away by yeah. the piece of uh, the theater I was seeing or the opera. Which may have had mature content, uh, oh. or what we think of it as being right. Uh, but really, when kids are playing first-person shooter games and routinely blowing the heads off of people, uh, right. what's the difference? What's the we're difference? talking about extreme yeah. violence, or we're talking about a hint of sexuality, or we're talking about I, I don't know. And how do you really define what's objectionable, what's not objectionable, and 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 uh, and. Like we ran – this happened last night. Our daughter has been kind of just sort of given free reign to watch YouTube videos. She's into – you know, it's kind of like she doesn't like to listen. She doesn't like language. Yeah, mine so I'm too. like, great. That's fine. And she turned to my wife at some point last night and said, "Uh, mommy, do you think 9-11 was an inside job? <laughs> wow. and, and And it was the second time she had asked her and my, my wife got angry. And yeah. was like, you know, we discussed this and, and I don't want to discuss that with you right now. And, and the fact that you bring that up again is painful and, and it makes us angry. Uh-huh. And, uh, but and, she's getting it from somewhere. But she's getting it from somewhere. Of course. And like, and, and, and she's been wearing headphones. So we decided that our issue is headphones. Right. Like I don't have a, I don't want to censor stuff. No, I no. want, I, I'm fine with you experiencing things, but I want to know what you're involved in so I can have a conversation with you and help disseminate stuff. Right. Right. Not so I can re-indoctrinate you, but so that we can discuss it. And I yeah. don't want to feel like, you know, certain things you can't talk about. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that's been an know? issue in our house too, because the middle huh. one, uh, the middle one and the older one love to watch, uh, any manner of theatrical slash musical production on YouTube. And it doesn't uh, matter where it was produced or how bad it is. They will watch it. Right. Ad nauseum. Oh man. And, uh, you have to be careful because, uh, the eight year old, you know, she's, she's starting to, you know, check that out and say, yeah. Oh wow. You know, let's, or what, let's watch funny puppy video. You know, <laughs> right. it can be anything for her. Right. It can run the gamut. So, but you don't know. You, you, right. you have no, 
have very little control. And there are parental controls, but easily circumvented and for, for the child. <laughs> how, how do you how do you deal with it? How, how do you deal with it in the context of uh, of work? Like like have have you had to run into any? Content that you were like, yeah, interesting. Nah, she's yeah, not gonna do that. Um, uh, not uh, there was one short film that I read, uh, which was actually pretty well written, but it, um, the 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 lead character had gone through a pretty harsh trauma, and uh, uh, the little girl had, yeah. and I just didn't want to broach it yet. It, and yeah. it wasn't. It must, she might have been a tour de force in that. I don't know. Uh, I just wasn't ready to. I wasn't ready to. Um, break that down for her. Yeah. And would I would never discourage it if, if there was a great piece of art and there was a, a great script. Uh, uh, it's a very personal decision, but you yes. know, I've seen children do unbelievably mind blowing performances. We all have in films yeah. that were of, of a very tough subject matter. Does that mean that shouldn't have, they shouldn't have done it or that film shouldn't have been made or was inappropriate? No, not at all. It's just, it's very personal. Right. But I, 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 the one time that I was kind of like, eh, and there was only one, there was one, one episodic role that I, when in what I was reading for that was just an awful, awful, terrible character. I was actually surprised that it made it on network TV because it was so <laughs> really? gnarly. And I, I passed on that, but yeah. Um, usually I don't, I don't have a huge issue. We yeah. did, dra- we dragged them all to, um, to see Bridge of Spies. Yeah. And my old eldest daughter is learning about, uh, former Soviet socialist Republic and, right. and the cold war. And she was into it a hundred percent, the middle one. So, so. Eight year old climbing, like, oh, just climbing all over. <laughs> Mom, when can we leave? <laughs> and all these, like, fi- we're at the arc light and all these 50 and 60 year old, like, empty nesters are sitting there with their glass of Chardonnay and their popcorn. <laughs> and they see just the Von Trapp family singers, like, <laughs> schlep in with an eight year old. And they're like, oh my God, what are they thinking? Really? You're going to bring these children in here? I mean, really? It's going to ruin our entire viewing. And, and you could see, luckily, um, Catherine was down the far end with my wife so i didn't have to deal with her at all <laughs> yeah but it, she was just squ- squirming oh. all over the place and and uh the people were getting irritated but you know what too bad i was in it so yeah there you go you're there in you it go. so i just said you're gonna watch my one scene and we're gonna watch it together <laughs> and then i'll tell you some stories later that's right yeah because that's I, the first time we've been able to do that yeah just to just to get so cool get them all together and go into a theater and watch it you know and you're gonna go watch this and like, you're gonna see dead. this is what like, i don't do. blink here it comes that's it <laughs> you get to work with spielberg on that <laughs> day, right? yeah it was amazing i mean that's incredible yeah i mean i only worked on the, the whole thing for four or five days but um just uh it's like one of those dreams it's, it's definitely a dream of, of any actor i think and there's yeah. a few directors out there that uh, and, and I wish I had had, you know, I, I've been in a more of a, a capacity to actually work with him, you know, sure. over a period of time rather than just a, you know, a day or two of my scenes. But, yeah. uh, I was just happy that my, you know, my one little scene made it in and that's all you can hope for is that's uh, all you can hope for. when you're not a celebrity talent or you're not a name, you know, it's just that your scene stays in the movie. Right. You know, and right. you're thrilled. You're thrilled that yeah. it made it in. And yeah. you know, there's, there's a benefit to having the experience and on set and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But there is that sense of like, boy, I sure hope that the part, not just for my own ego, but the feeling of like, there it is. And I got good tape and I got, yeah. and I got to participate in the storytelling. And the, exactly. It, and then it, in some small way advances the plot. That's yeah. all, you know, and so yeah. you feel like, Oh, maybe it was like critical enough. Just to say that line, <laughs> since they got the whole big speech that was supposed to come right after that, <laughs> which I worked, stayed up all night trying to memorize. Oh man! <laughs> I was like, "Can I have a clipboard in this? Can I just can I? Because I think he would have a clipboard." It's like, it's like, <laughs> He's got a lot to say. <laughs> it's a lot of anyway. What's, what's your uh, what's your memorization process like in terms of like oh uh, just sheer rep uh, sheer repetition sheer repetition? Yeah, I have to run it and run it, and yeah. run it. Um, and. I'm not a very, I'm not a super quick study and I, and I have a terrible habit of, uh, of, um, of, um, uh, paraphrasing and, and yeah. just, you know, um, slightly changing, slightly changing the, the meaning of the, of the text and yeah. to, to, to suit my own <laughs> and then going and then having my wife go, no, it's not this, no, it's, it's not this, it. it's this. Yeah. Uh, no, no. My wife keeps me real this. honest too. Yeah. Oh. Because, you know, again, it's an, it's another thing that you learn, uh, as you progress, uh, um, and you realize how difficult it is to write something amazing. And when the writing is good, it doesn't need any, I mean, if it's fully improvised, that's one thing, right? Right. right. But, and if they're asking you to make 
subtle changes or add, you know, to make it to, your to own, throw you, make it your own or to throw your own input in there. Right. And if you have the, you have the, you know, the leeway to do that, fantastic. But for the most part, those words have been agonized over and probably uh, handled by a script doctor at some yeah. point or, uh, or further enhanced. And, and if they're, Great. If it's if they're great words, you don't need to change anything. You just have to get. So that's part of my memorization process is getting back to the original yeah. text. There was a great line that uh, Tarantino gave to Howard Stern last week, where he said that very thing of like Howard asked him if he tolerates any paraphrasing, and Quentin said, "No, no, I'm I'm paying them to say my words." Yeah, that's absolutely true. And and I'm an, I have the same. Like uh, I, I struggled the same way. Yeah, I found a great tape, and the um, that I couldn't believe helped me as much as it did. But it's uh, I'm giving a plug to these guys. The the um, fake sides is that the name of their website? I think it is. I'll put the link. They they do uh, mock sides. Oh, these guys who write fake sides Uh to practice for like casting director workshops and stuff like that. Put this tape out talking about this process called SMT, which is the something memorization technique, something like that. Okay. And they have this whole breakdown of you read the script like three times real quick. And to get the gist of it. And then just always saying it out loud. And then like a couple different steps of what to do. Like you might play it with a bunch of different conflicting emotional choices. Mm. So like you'll run the whole scene, but like, like you're telling a loved one that their cat was found yeah. in a ditch. And then you give the whole thing. Yeah. Then you do the exact same story, but now you're cussing them out for taking the last, I don't know, strawberry uh uh-huh. Welch's pop out of the yeah. freezer. You get the idea. Uh-huh. So like doing that and then doing it with physicality. Like there's a bunch of other things. Interesting. By the end of it, you got it. Down. Yeah. Crazy. That's so like, interesting. Down in that way where not in the way of like if I sit here and say it directly to you, the words are all there. But right. if I've got to do any movement, I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Like down, like I'm moving and you give me a redirect. You want me to change the character choice? I'm fine with that. That level of, sure. of well, that's, the that's the kind of uh, freedom that stage allows you with a month yes. rehearsal process that's or a right. six week rehearsal process because you know it inside out right. and no, you know, you change the intention, you change the blocking all day long and it, you know, you, you know your text, you know, that's your, right. Um, but we don't have that kind of flexibility no. in, in film and TV. And you have to find a way to figure that out yeah. for the next day's audition. I'm I am constantly amazed at at series regulars that <laughs> get huge script changes the night before. I don't know how they do it. It's I mean, and we're talking it's a skill. I and mean, yes. then big monstrous chunks of of text that are completely rewritten the night before. Yeah. And they're, you know, these are, these are, this is important exposition. Yes. <laughs> right. <It's laughs> you critical. You cannot miss major <laughs> plot points. So I was, I, I marveled at these kids on Richie Rich taking yeah. in, we did two episodes a week. That's amazing. And then taking in, you know, 40 some odd pages of dialogue that they would have to learn on top of their school. Right. That level of, of discipline and getting it. Yeah. Again, that's kind of where homeschool fits in because yeah. you have the flexibility. Uh, you have the flexibility to study at a, a slightly accelerated rate or whatever rate you need to. Yeah. And come back to it whenever you need to. Right. And, uh, and, and then work on your script because it's more fun to work on your sides. You know, it's, yeah. more, it's, it's way more fun to, you know, work <laughs> on your right. job that's you're right. going to. And you don't want to be that guy the right. next day, right? When you're just constantly yelling for line <laughs> or script supervisors oh, coming over to you and say, no, it's actually, um, it's then yeah. and then it's, Yes, there, and it's so here. You're adding a lot of so's. I get that a lot, so I'm like, so, uh, you know, you know. The director's like, do you need a minute? When the first AD comes over and says, do you need a minute? That's, that's kind of the worst feeling. Oh, you need a couple minutes dude, to, oh. kiss of death. I'll never forget, I was shooting an episode of uh, The Practice, and I was playing a cop on the stand, and I'm recounting this, um, I'm recounting this, uh, pulling over this guy who's uh, guilty. Well, we find out later is. And, uh, and it's a Friday night and I'm the, like the one day guest star cop, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm the last setup of the day. And the, it's just, I think I told you this. It's like, it is a palpable feeling and it's just, 
chunks of exposition. As, and then the subject did this and stepped out of the V and I said to him this and, and you think it's just, and it's pretty basic, right? Cause you're just recounting, you're just you're telling recounting a story. the arrest, right? Right. I'm like, well, I don't need to be terribly, uh, interesting, letter uh, and right. or letter perfect on this. <laughs> and the director decides that yes, you do. And these are the layers and the nuances that I would also like you to incorporate as uniformed cop on the stand. Mm hmm. And then you realize that you're sweating mm. and you're sweating through your uniform <laughs> and the crew is irritated because this jackass guest star can just not say his words. And I'm saying the words, but it's just not right for whatever reason. And then, you know, those are the moments where you – those are the moments you earn your paycheck, yeah. whatever you're – you know. Yeah. And you just you just try to get it together and go yeah. take a few deep breaths and, and listen to the director and ch take his adjustments and make the changes and just get through the scene. And then you got to turn around and cover it and cover it a different way and cover it this way. And, oh, man. But that is – that's an, that's another way that you learn memorization because yes. the sheer repetition on set. It's like, well, yeah. we're going to cover it seven ways to Sunday. So yep. you're going to learn this thing. Yep. <laughs> the, and the alternative of what you're describing of, do I really want it? Let me, I'm going yeah. to play one more round of Titanfall. Yeah. And it only and then, took, yeah, it only took a couple times or maybe once or twice as a young actor. Uh, and I never liked the feeling of uh, not being rock solid on it. But, yeah. And so it always made me a little nervous as it should anyone yeah. who's a uh, purported professional. Right. And, you know, getting there and then having an experience like that on a Friday evening, last setup of the day, it's the martini. Like everybody in the crew is looking at you like, really? Yeah. Really? I mean, even the like, dude that pulls the cable and the, right. the, 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 the <laughs> utility the, sounds. The assistant to crafty is like, yeah. really, dude? You can't bust out this one scene as a cop in a uniform on the stand? You're the guy who makes the guy who's working as the assistant to Crafty, who's been in the business for two years, go, I can do this work. <laughs> totally. Yeah. And inspires it's that like, person to yeah. go to. It's like know? every internet troll. Yeah. That's right. Every internet troll that pipes in about whenever we, <laughs> whenever we're bitching about our day rate or how, right. how tough it is to make a, a living. Uh, <laughs> right. You know? You're giving, you're and just then, giving and them. And then they put the day rate out there like, Oh, I'm so sorry. You can't get by on that one. <laughs> like, yeah. Except for the thousand auditions I had to do to get that. Right. To get that one thing. Yeah. And all the memorization that I did to get it. Right. There. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's just it's unbelievable. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, uh, sh shifting gears. Yes. Uh, uh, I, I, tell me, because you, you were the player character in Dragon Age Inquisition. Is that yes. right? Mm -hmm. One of four. One of four. Yeah. What's what's that experience like uh, in terms of the, 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 the amount of time involved and then creating a character, in particular a character that that the that the that the player is going to be creating. Yeah, uh, very interesting. That was my first time. Uh, I'm not a huge gamer, mm -hmm. um, but it was the first time that I I didn't really know what I was uh, being considered for. Hmm. And I think it might have been the first time, the first game. I could correct me if I'm wrong, but it might have been the first game that gave multiple options for the player. Like there may have been man, woman before, uh -huh. but this was the first time they did a uh, male British, female British, male American, female American wow. choices. So you can choose any of those four. I see. Um, so going in, I had worked on the original Dragon Age uh, as a, uh, a Zevran character who had, had this like thick, you know, uh, sort of – uh, Antonio Banderas thing going on. You gotcha. Know, very different. And they were hesitant, I think, at, initially. They're like, ah, can we, can we cast Curry as the one of the player characters? Cause he was Zavran in this and he's, you know, recognizable. It was a very different kind of type of role. But I got the job and I was stoked because, you know, Pat told me it was going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of sessions, which yeah. is fantastic. I didn't know how, how many it, it would end up turning, turning out to be. Wow. But, um, it was, in, this is an interesting job because we had, they had recorded the British male and female already. Ah. So my callbacks consisted of me going in and doing my interpretation of the line in the exact same time stamp as what the British actor had done. Wow. So that – So all the well, animations had been done to uh, the British character? Not they, all the animations had wanted... been done, but his – all his dialogue had been. I see. So my timing had to be exact. I see. So there was, and, and, and after you do it, like after 10 sessions of, get, you get really good at just being spot on yeah. with your timing. What's my time? Nine now, seconds? Got and it. then the real, for me, the real challenge was I would have made 
very different acting choice. The, the actor that they used was wonderful. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I would have made very different choices in my own interpretation if it was uh, like you would typically do a game. You go in, you're voicing a character and you're, and you booked it on your interpretation of that character and your voice. Yeah. And now you're going to perform the role, right? Well, this was performing the role within the, within the constraints of a time locking it into that timestamp, right? From, okay. Cause this actor had yeah. already done it. Uh, so at first I found that very limiting hmm. and fr- kind of frustrating. Yeah. But as it progressed and as I got more comfortable with my interpretation of male American hero, you yeah. know, yeah. uh, in the game, I started to find ways to make it more interesting, uh, from a character standpoint, from a character development standpoint and for myself. Yeah. Because you're going in there and you've got a, a thousand lines for the day or whatever, whatever your chunk is or yeah. you know, 300 or whatever, 400. And you're like, you could look at it as sheer drudgery, <laughs> right. but I had such a great director, guy named Josh Dean. Awesome. Shout out to Josh. Uh, <laughs> he kept it so fun and so like light and we oh, had, a, awesome. we, we had a great working relationship. So, um, yeah, it was, it was an interesting process. You know, I, I would, would I have liked to been the first guy to record it? Absolutely. Sure. And then have them match my, have you match yeah, your reads. Fine. Absolutely. <laughs> but, uh, it was a good, it was a good exercise for me. We ended up doing about 30 sessions on that. So it was, oh, wow. it was a good job. Very That's good marvelous. job. Uh, not as many as Delaney's doing for, uh, did Delaney for did, Mass Delaney Effect. did, uh, so many. Yeah. Fallout, 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 four. Fallout. Yeah. Yeah. It was amazing. Two and a half years, I think, of, of, of sessions. <laughs> That's a lot of sessions. That's a lot of sessions. I mean, I think Nolan North might be the only one who's <laughs> got <laughs> that beat. <laughs> it's, you know, I think the thing that I appreciate so much about about that repetition too. Cause I got to do quite a few in Bioshock, that feeling of living with that character that so often for like just the smaller guys, you don't get to dive in as deep. Right. Incidentals. Right. It's just about it's, getting it's the it choice done. That you make and then building it totally. and getting through without and walking out with a little bit of voice. Absolutely. You know, no, it's really nice to actually have a role. Yeah. It's really nice to actually have a character who is recurring within the franchise or recurring within that, at least within that particular game. Yeah. Who is a principal and you get to make choices on it. It's, it's, uh, and I've, I mean, I would say the vast majority of my game experiences have been incidentals, like, mm. you know, uh, additional voices, additional voices. Yeah. Every once in a while, I'll book a, a real interesting, um, you know, principal or, yeah. or supporting role. Yeah. Uh, and that's been, it's been great. It's, it's helped my, it's helped my acting. You know, yeah, it, it absolutely does, and it helps my, it helps my uh, auditioning for animation projects, and it's it's a great stepping it's a great stepping stone because as you know, animation is a tough nut to crack, and yep. and there's so many talented people doing it. You don't okay. have to go anywhere in this town. You can pick, you can make a superstar cast. You can make ten superstar casts yes. just by making a phone call. That's you right. Know? So to 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 crack that boy, it's something you feel, else. You feel like it's Christmas, and and, and my daughter being on a. A recurring on a Nick show. I'm like, I joke all the time. I live vicariously through my kids' animation career. And she only goes in once every three weeks. But it's like, but still, still, I'm like, oh, sweet. We're going to Nick Studios. Awesome. And then I get to see SpongeBob. I get to see, <laughs> see Tom Kenny. I get to see Tom Kenny. I'm like, oh, I have a freak out. Like a fan freak out. And I got to take a picture with him. I have pictures with Tom Kenny. My kid doesn't. That's hilarious. I'm like, I saw SpongeBob and Patrick today. And I got pictures with both of them. Oh, That's the best. <laughs> and they have a soda machine. Oh man, is it one of the cool big ones? The fountain like- one. Now you just you know. <laughs> <laughs> I have one one last thing I'd like to do. Yeah. We're running out of time, but but I'd love to do this. Um, because uh, I'm I'm curious about about process, mm. and I, I bring all these comic books in here. I'd love for you to take a comic book if you're comfortable doing it. Sure, yeah. Grab a comic, yeah. f- flip through, find a character with two or three lines, uh-huh. and then sort of talk me through. Your process of how you go building a character. Interesting. I love it. I love it. I've never heard of Squirrel Girl. Great. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds a little naughty, but it does. It's, it's just awesome, a little bit. Nevertheless, it might be. Ah, crossed. That looks interesting. Crossed. And now, yeah. And now, are now what you, are, what are, these, you looking are these graphic novels? Yeah. Well, these, they're, uh, this, the modern comic world is, is very, yeah. I think there's, there's <laughs> TNA in that one. The, uh, <laughs> The modern comic world has has taken an interesting <laughs> turn. Yeah, and and it's uh, a lot of the sort of graphic novel style is becoming more the order of the day. Right, right. Here's DC, uh, DC Universe versus Masters of the Universe. Oh, perfect. Yeah. <clears throat> There's Arrow. Sweet. 
Oh, this guy looks interesting. Awesome. I'm going to take a look at it first. Should I cold yeah. read it first? Yeah, cold read. Well, tell, tell, just describe what you're seeing. Talk me through your process. What does the guy look like? Uh, he looks like a freakish, this really scary skeleton, yellow, yellow faced, red eyed skeleton dudes with, with two extremely sharp, uh, uh, like ram horns mm. coming out of his head. Mm -hmm. And then he's with this like sort of hot young chica who could be, you know, in her early twenties or something in, in sort of like these, this fantastic outfit. Uh huh. And they're having this, uh, this scene. The House of Secrets. <laughs> what does he uh, say? She, she says, the more your magic battery charges up, the more I feel like puking. Did you think, Black Alice, that you could outlive this benighted little world of yours? I need my readers. <laughs> <laughs> How embarrassing is that? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, kind of. I kind of hope maybe you'd uh, you'd spare me, you know. For helping? Your death serves a greater purpose, child. Oh, that comes from the dude that goes, flash. There's a voice that comes from the void. Uh -huh. We don't know. Uh, Orko is his name? Orko. Apparently. Orko. Okay. You familiar with him? Yeah, from Masters of the Universe. Yep. So that's uh, Orko saying that. Earth is nothing but a sacrifice upon my altar. And it means to and it means toward my conquest of eternity. <laughs> oh, says Orko. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I shall remake eternity. No, Eternia. That's a place. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. So you know. Help me. Sorry. I shall remake Eternia as I have remade Skeletor, as I myself have been reborn into the collective. That's do that awesome. for like 26 minutes. That's right. And you're done. And you're no, done. you can't even do it for 26 minutes. You can't minutes. do that for 26 minutes. Fred Tattish can. Fred can do it. Yeah, the Hulk. So, um, yeah, so uh, another fun part of no matter how good of a cold reader you are, yes, uh, when you're in your mid forties, you need your readers. Yeah, and then you don't you get in the booth and you go, oh hey, I, um, I never see. that that is not far, and it's just a slightest bit too close. Hmm. And so the elasticity of the the retina is changing and you're yeah. going that, that that was a shocker for me because I was in denial about that for a long time. My oh. wife hers has been shot for a while so you got to hold the you got to hold the thing over here for her right. I'm still in denial. I yeah. but yeah. I've been well, you're a little younger than I'm me. a yeah. little bit younger. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh the process. I don't know. I think uh cold reading is super fun and I Great. always look at it as a chance to uh, be crazy and 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 make mistakes. Yeah. Uh, and and but the more uh, th this is like specific material too. You know. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. And and people know it. Like they people like you know like the you characters. know who Skeletor is. But <laughs> I, I haven't heard Skeletor. Skeletor since Frank Langella did him in the movie yeah, with Dolph Lundgren. Exactly. Or, or the animated version that was sound like. Listen to me, <laughs> hey man. They all sounded like that. everyone screamed like this back in <laughs> Eternia. Even Beastman. Uh, Beastman did the same voice, but with a little bit more texture. Yeah. And then, job, you know. and then you had uh, <laughs> yeah, Casey Kasem doing Shag. Hey, Scoob. So like, man. hey, Scoob, man. Hey, Scoob, like, what's going on, bro? <laughs> I mean, like, seriously, we need a sandwich. <laughs> and then you'd hear him on American Top 40. I know. It was a trip. Yeah, He'd be on everything. Casey Kasem. Got him down. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it's so much fun. I mean, we basically play when when we yeah. get hired, we're, we we get a play. You know, and play. that's why – that's what's so awesome about – you know, getting anything to do with animation or or, oh, or or games because you're given all the artistic freedom. I mean, you're hired for the, whatever choice you made, right. clearly, but you have all this freedom. Whereas, in when we're being paid to represent a product, get it in, yeah, and get it in, get it in with the time, and get it in in a pleasant, usually pleasant manner that wants makes you want to buy things, right? <laughs> That's right. So, it's your job. It's it's crazy. Yeah. It's uh yeah. it's it's um you know I I I love talking with you about this stuff because we've known each other for yeah. as long as I've been in L.A. Yeah, and yeah. uh and and we're often on the same stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming. I'm very much at so. your stack, but yeah. we're similar types, and yeah. we get we get and into on camera stuff. too. We just and found on camera. Out. That's yeah. right. Yeah, which is super fun. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's fun to be able to 
you know, have someone else in that. You know, yeah. they always say that you walk into a room and there's 40 people who look like you. Right. And, uh, and there's to a certain extent that's true. Right. And when you find someone who looks as much like you yeah, as we like exactly brother each other. other. <laughs> um, but, uh, but then, but also to see not only where we align, but also how different our processes yeah, can yeah. be and the different choices that we make really right. underlines the uniqueness of what you know, the, the lines that make John Curry, John Curry and the lines that make me, me, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And it's, uh, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's what I really love about, about, you know, not only being at CESD and right. the amazing people that we have, but the amazing people that they've assembled in the, in the, in the waiting room, you know, to be across of them. It's, it's awesome. And it was amazing to be able to hang out and talk with you today. Oh, it's great. I've know. been looking forward to it. I was hoping you'd ask me to come. Oh come man, I, me I too. Just, I'm thrilled it worked out, man. It's so fun. It's so fun. So, so how can people find you if they want to track you and follow you and all that? Other uh, stuff? you can, uh, my Twitter handle is at John Curry six, J O N C U. R R Y six because John three uh, Curry one through five were taken and I'm super not creative apparently so I just I they said they suggested a handle I'm like sounds good John right. Curry six and they're like people go that's a terrible Twitter handle what are you thinking like you're in entertainment you should be you should have a good the, John the Curry. real John, the real John, like, John Curry oh, how about John Curry six good awesome. uh, and then John Curry like just add John Curry he's like some like weird engineer dude in like England who never posts anything like it's like it has nine followers and it's like just sell me your handle dude right right just give me your handle <laughs> you can have John Curry six come on like you're never gonna use this I mean I I mean I feel Eventually, like for an older guy I go on, on there fairly regularly <laughs> right and then uh my Facebook like because you know Facebook is like that was for the old people now right yeah that's right so Instagram, and, and Instagram, Instagram and Instagram and Twitter, Twitter is where the the young ones are that's right? where the one young ones are that's I also can't ones. imagine that what I say is that interesting just on a, like on a on a day to day basis that yeah. I would tweet something incredibly profound or, or at yeah. and or entertaining but people do tweet some awesome stuff. People do tweet. But awesome I have stuff. small. I was like relatively young kid, so it's like I don't really have as much time as I'd like to do things, yeah. you know, of I that nature. You. But I should do it more. And then I have a website, uh, which is John John Curry dot uh, com, J O N C U R R Y dot com, nice. which is uh, uh, needs to be updated. Okay, so, uh, that's good. Any of you, uh, <laughs> any of you website <laughs> website developers that want to help me out there, feel free. Uh, there's some really awesome ten year old work on there. I just want you to all take a look at it. I think it's kind of like a, it's like a little uh, stroll down memory lane. It's a, uh, it's a time capsule. Yeah, it's a time capsule, you know? and uh, and it's in Flash, which is not which Flash. no Apple device can use. Which, so can there's, use. which is super helpful. When you're trying to get your brand out there. I'll tell you, I, I'm not to make a plug for for Wix.com, but I I recently did the website for this thing. Oh yeah, on Wix dot yeah. com, yeah. and and uh, it's it's all HTML five, and um, and it was very easy to You're do. You're gonna have to walk me through it because I gotta it. do I gotta do something immediately, awesome. even if it's just getting an updated demo reel on something. Hey man, that's it. You know, that's it. I just <laughs> I'm inept. I'm electronically inept. Well, you can find John Curry at John Curry Six <laughs> on Twitter, <laughs> www.johncurry.com, or find him on Facebook and find and, and see pictures not only of John. <laughs> you can see him in uh, Bridge of Spies. That's right. And anything else in coming theaters out near about? you right now? And uh, I have an episode of uh, I guess Darn Scandal coming up in the oh, next great. season. I think it's um, I think it's episode twelve. Awesome. Uh, in a not unfamiliar uh, capacity, and. Uh, Awesome. <laughs> if you're familiar with my oeuvre of on-camera work, <laughs> um, which you probably aren't. <laughs> but yeah, it's hey, uh, this has been a real treat. I'm I'm so happy that we could uh, oh, me too, man. Out, man. Me I'll too. do it anytime. So I can much. do this like once a week with you. If you oh, want, man. You know? I mean, they might want to hear other guests. It's fun. I'd love to do a round table with a few other folks, like bring in folks I've had in. We get Edgerly and uh, Nolan and Tatasher and Brian. Yeah. I mean, just 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 haul it up. And I I think we'll, I I definitely want to do that. Scotty Menville, Scotty White. Absolutely. God, we could have eight guys in here like that. Without a break. Just have. Absolutely. It'd be a stitch. Yeah. Get some Jack Daniels. I'll see, make it. I'll make it happen. See where it goes. We'll make it happen. That'll be probably at the end of the season. I'll do one like that. It'll be super fun to get a bunch of folks in and just and just riff. Yeah, I love it. That'd be great. Well, as far as this one, we're we're calling it a night. But thank you so much for tuning in. Have a wonderful holiday and enjoy the rest of your 2016. Merry Christmas. 2015, man. whatever it is. Merry yeah. Christmas. Happy and, New Year. And if you happen to be listening to this in April, uh, oh yeah, Happy Arbor yeah, Day. Ha- oh, Happy Easter. Whatever. You know. <laughs> John Curry, thanks again, man. Thanks for having me, buddy. You bet. Thanks, Steve. 
This has been All Over VoiceOver with Kiff VH. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please go to iTunes and give us a positive rating. It truly helps. Follow me on Twitter at Kiff VH or on Instagram at Kiff VH or on Vero at Kiff VH. Thanks so much for listening. Talk to you soon. Claim victory and depart the field. Werewolf? Yeah. 